Maduro, probably Jake should act as the list of votes to create effective change. They effectively pressure Maduro that LA to 19 plan at the beginning of the end of this corruption and repressive regime could be at hand. It's why the claims that Maduro's re-election was illegitimate, much with the rest of the world, including Latin America, agreed. Trump hit Maduro where it hurts most, imposing sanctions to squeeze Venezuela's oil. Maduro depends on oil revenue to keep his military and supporters happy. Sanctions help further further diverting of Venezuelan assets by Maduro and preserve these for the Venezuelan people. This has prevented corruption and pushed Maduro towards a transition as rented in 19 explained that the U.S. and allies must use sanctions as a tool to shut down Maduro's criminal activities. And by closing off criminal sources of revenue, Maduro's relative exit of costs will be lowered and will in turn increase the likelihood of a peaceful transition. Sanctions isolate Maduro to the point where they are redesigned into a welcome alternative. Stopping his abuse of power is key to forcing him out. As rented in 19 further than there are significant amounts of evidence of the impact of sanctions on Maduro's power targets. His sanctions lead to his ability to finance and anti-democratic initiatives and human rights abuses, and they have also constrained his inner struggle. This his control over inner, inner state and assets is also slipping along with public confidence. Sanctions have increased leverage for democratic forces with Maduro. Maduro has also recently reopened talks with opposition after dialogue stalled. The increase in pressure of sanctions is a key factor in his decision and he and his inner circle are more limited than ever. The fact that negotiations are working and are underway right now in Venezuela proves that sanctions do worse. They are reforming elections and resolving humanitarian problems. As Jomez and I can explain that during months of negotiations that have made very important progress and are already to see a new designation to the start of the new national electoral Council in the face of the 2020 parliamentary elections and actualization of the exchange of oil and for medicine and food, which will lower the price and make it more affordable for everyone. The impact is ending the crisis. As Hofer tonight to explain that food insecurity and nutrition are at high sky levels now. The Venezuelan minimum wage is around seven dollars a month, only covers 4.7 percent of food and more than 80 percent of households are currently food insecure. With 3.7 million Venezuelans being malnourished as a result of the trial of more asylum claims globally in 2018 than any other country, the number of Venezuelan migrants and refugees is expected to reach eight million in 2020, surpassing Syrian migration by a total of three million. Maduro's policies would be the root cause of economic failure. It's not sanctions. It's the proposal at 19 explains that U.S. policy is not the reason why Venezuela is a mess. The U.S. is not making Venezuela any worse than it already was or it will be under the existing leadership. The ruling class of Venezuela is the reason it is a mess. Maduro's government may fail to take Maduro's incompetence as killing Venezuela. The economy began to decline years ago. It has been an economic depression three years prior to the imposition of sanctions. Our second contention is preventing the invasion. All other avenues for ousting Maduro have failed. As O'Neill in 2018 explains that the opposition has worked to find democratic avenues, winning a two thirds majority in legislating, only to have Maduro control Supreme Court and do on all the legislation, protesting the illegitimate assemblies and participating in, um, in fake regional elections. With few avenues now available, the opposition is the fragmented open space for violent tactics, which is why Trump is poised to take military action against Venezuela. It would be disastrous. As more in 2019, and Fox explained that the administration has made it no secret that it's considering military action to forcibly remove Maduro. If that's what's required, the U.S. will do what they need to do, said Pompeo. Trump said that we can do everything short of military action, the U.S. has such strong rhetoric that it puts us in a bind. Either we double down or fall through, or we risk the back down and our credibility on our foreign policy. Sanction-driven diplomacy is literally the last effort before conflict. War hawks are pushing for it, and Guaido approves. As Bando in 19 explained that if the administration fails to oust Maduro through diplom diplomacy and sanctions, it will suffer a major PR embarrassment, and Washington will have no alternative. If Maduro doesn't fold an impasse, they would encourage the president to act militarily, and he routinely treats military action as a first resort. Guaido suggested that they might even authorize a U.S. military strike at all, as all options on the table. There are two impacts. First is worsening the crisis. It's more than 19 explained that a military option for Venezuela would be catastrophic. It would exacerbate chaos and make it even bloodier. This would spark a civil war and divide Venezuela via a military option would alienate regional allies and modern Venezuela and the coalition and make restructuring much more difficult. The second impact of the U.S. Russian war is 20 and 19 explained that Russia has investments tied up in Venezuela and successful talks would be a tremendous victory for diplomacy, but the other possibility is escalating tensions between Washington and Moscow would lead to a standoff in Venezuela. The billions of dollars at stake make the key the conflict is a key indicator of global stability and renewed cold war style tensions with broad implications for future conflicts. the framing first was economic sanctions in the Maduro crisis create problems for LGBT folks or Bellers 19 of VOA rights the turmoil has pushed gay rights to the bottom of the pile of priorities with funding for many organizations and resources either reduced or cut entirely under the government's family food bag scheme, same-sex couples were excluded, health infrastructure stretched to a breaking point by the economic turmoil, a lack of drugs and medical supplies have particularly affected those living with HIV. This topic requires the discussion of LGBTQ oppression, both in terms of economic sanctions and the debate space. Second, fiat is illusory. The resolution is an imaginary mind game. 
If you vote affirmative or negative, the resolution does not pass nor is prevented from passing. It acts as a form of academic development, and that was its goal since inception. However, our narrative in the debate round does create real change or brief the impacts. Voting for the identity narrative we are about to present legitimizes our fight for equality in the debate space. This has an impact on real people. This is the highest layer of debate and needs to be evaluated before post fiat impacts. Third, reading this narrative outweighs staying on case for three reasons. A, COVID and I come from a small school in rural Minnesota. We taught ourselves how to debate off PF videos. We don't have a coach, the money to hire a coach or to attend debate camp. We pay our way to regional tournaments and travel with the Lakeville debate team. If we can learn how to debate this narrative, other teams can too. B, the Blake Round Robin includes some of the best debate teams in the country. Much like Alan and Ahana, if we run a critique in this round, specifically at the Blake Round Robin, it will increase the publicity and discussion about LGBT oppression in debate. It is here or never. C, NSDA will never give us a topic where we can discuss our personal experiences with oppression, so we have no choice but to do it now. The hearts. First, in the status quo of debate, LGBT people are oppressed. School is debate, and debate is school. Students are debaters, debaters are students. Evidence about LGBT hatred in school also applies to debate. Polling conducted by GLSEN finds the vast majority of LGBTQ students experience harassment or assault based on personal characteristics. Seven in 10 LGBT students experience verbal harassment at school based on sexual orientation. Second, we experience this violence and we're sick of it. We're sick of the word faggot. We're sick of the judgment. We're sick of the exclusion. We're sick of getting beaten up. We're sick of the debate Reddit and their homophobic shit. They use gay as an insult. They say we should be dead. We're sick of kids making homophobic jokes on the bus, looking at us the whole time. It's not funny. We are sick of hearing debaters before they go into round. No homo, don't be queer, faggot. We are sick of being from a small rural school. We are sick of feeling worthless at tournaments. We are sick of the toxic masculinity. We are sick of our meaninglessness to this community. But most of all, we are sick of this queer phobic shit. The impact of all of this is the death of LGBT souls that were much too young. We are impacted, our friends are impacted, this community is impacted. The Trevor Project finds LGBT youth seriously contemplate suicide at almost three times the rate of heterosexual youth. LGBT youth are almost five times as likely to have attempted suicide compared to heterosexual youth. The solvency. The alt is affirming our narrative. Our narrative combats queer phobia in two ways. First is publicity. Because we are both recording this argument and publishing it on Beyond Resolved, word will get out. Increasing the publicity of this argument is critical. It will allow the debate community to have an important discussion on queer phobia in debate. Difficult discussion in the community are the internal link to any real change in the community. There is no way to fix something if no one knows about it or cares about it. Affirming our narrative makes the critique even more powerful. Second is legitimacy. If you vote for our narrative, it will legitimize their views. For example, we got the idea, idea about running the chaos in the scoring thing round. If you vote for the narrative and don't punish us for reading it, other teams will follow the trend. This creates more discussion and action as the best way to create change is to put a ballot on the line. Thus, the term. about the topic of education. Okay, so kind of what we're going to be arguing about this round is that the topic, like talking about education in the debate space, right, that is the biggest impact you can get in general education talking about the crisis of Venezuela. However, <coughs> if you're the top of our case with the laying that is presented by the top, we outweigh because we're actually giving you actual solvency for the problems facing queer debaters. It outweighs on every um, single level. I Let's get, go on to your can interest. I ask a really quick follow-up if you don't already saw the same line? Why can't we do both? Why is your affirmative mutually exclusive? Like, why can't yeah, we talk so, about like, queer individuals and also talk yeah, about like, so, the topic? So let me answer that question. So kind of what we're getting at is just like staying on case, right? That's not actually addressing the issues inherent to the debate space in the first place. The only way to actually address the issues and to draw publicity to these problems in the first place is to have it happen in a round and put a ballot on the line, especially at a round with a lot of publicity. So let's go on to the impacts of your case, right? So all of the impacts that you give you are actually like post-fiat, it's like fiat is illusory, everything is a mind. Yeah, I don't think we would concede that fiat is illusory. 
there necessarily, but yeah, we're just reading a topical argument that talks about these so, implications of ending or starting sanctions on Venezuela. Wait, so why issue. is the fiat illusory? Like, I, I don't really have, like, honestly, I'm not 100% sure what the fiat is. Like, I really don't know, and maybe it's something you can explain to me, but I don't have a good enough understanding of that definition to adequately answer that question. Okay. So I guess my follow-up would be, what, what does fiat mean in this context? Yeah, so fiat in this context is pretty much like what happens whether or not you affirm or negate. So what okay. we are arguing is that, like, by negating in your sense, like, nothing is actually changing in Venezuela because, frankly, it's not like Trump is going yeah, to decide whether or not to keep sanctions on or off. Anyway. Yeah, that would make sense. I just don't understand why your discussion is sort of like, like, why you both, why, why can't we do both? Like, you even read this uniqueness at the top of your case that's like, it affects people in Venezuela. So why can't we have a conversation about the topic at hand, which is sanctions on Venezuela, and, like, still have a discussion about your critique, so, which I agree is very important. So I'm going to ask this question. In the for sure. Time. What would be the avenue for us to actually discuss queer phobia in debate while staying on case? Well, that's yeah, literally impossible. But don't you do that yourself? Like, don't you, at the top of your case, read about how, like, same-sex people have been harmed, like, through the, yeah, through the lack our, of HIV medication in Venezuela, which is a link to the topic, right? Yeah, that's our link into the topic, okay. like, like, talking about, like, the resolution at hand. But we're arguing that because we link into the resolution, LGBT issues need to be discussed. Yeah. But more important than that, we need to actually find a way to make real change yeah. in the debate space Please by sense. talking about LGBT yeah. And I think, and I think what we're kind of getting at here is we can have this discussion, like your case proves. It says we can talk about Venezuela, and we can also talk about like a very important critique, which I agree matters a lot. So I think those discussions are exclusive. Like they're not mutually exclusive, and we can have we can have them together. I think that'd be cool. Uh, we got like ten seconds. Interpretation and violation, the affirmative should demand a hypothetical implementation of a of reducing sanctions or getting rid of sanctions on Venezuela. They don't. Resolve before Colin reflects a legislative warrant, Army Officer School 2005. The Colin introduces a formal resolution after the war resolves. Resolve Colin that this Colin petition should demand. USFG is the federal government of the United States based in D the USA based in DC. Dictionary of Government and Politics 98. The United States federal government based in Washington, D.C. The text of the resolution calls for a debate on the hypothetical implementation of government action, Erickson 3. Each topic contains key elements. An agent doing the act, doing the act in the United States, the verb should, that urges action should adopt a policy. The entire debate is about whether something ought to occur. Reducing sanctions requires government action because the United States federal government needs to be the one to do it. Vote, neg, first, prep, and clash. Post hoc to op op topic changes alter the balance balance of prep, which all, which structurally favors the act, because in this case they have the last speech, speech and they can use terms. Key to engage a prepared adversary and a target of mutually contestation. Second is limit. Specific topics are key to a reasonable expectation for the negative ground. Open 
create subjects, create incentives for avoidance and monopolization of moral high ground. That denies the role for art, art and demand, turns accessibility. Third is refinement. Unlimited topics make accessing the validity of their apps truth case impossible and causes recessionary ground, which creates incentives for avoidance. The impact is class. That's key for knowledge production and quest for judgment. March 10 and 15. Delivered in processes must refuse to constitute it as a starting point. Privileges, differences, protected community and democracy functions within an adversarial understanding of politics. Political struggle is a high level democratic politics without abandoning it and devolving into long longer argumentation. Deliberation is then set by democratic politics and what happens on the object to establish the reality of structural injustice. Democracy must correct the fact that it is social structure. Different because we have situated access to it on our shared reality. This common perspective on the object level adversarial politics and political communication can refer to the passivity and privilege itself. One of those who is struggling for oppressive or positive conversations of politics and doing justice is different. They do not have the word to work in justice, imperfect, and never done to extinguish all differences, extinguish all people altogether, transfer dialogue and research, research and understanding of functional horizons. <laughs> Individual arguments we read have no effect on our subject dignity because the ballot can't solve any of their office. However, the process of clash on our interpretation facilitates internal links turn to, turn to the app. Advocacy ties to resolution, incentivize nuanced research and class and women well prepared opponents. They turn to debate into a monologue, which means their arguments are presumptively false until subject to a real well research scrutiny. This debate can occur um, go to their case. Reading on, on the topic can solve because they create a well nuanced research and class argument about a sort of LGBT vote within Venezuela, which means they should have done it with the US federal government action. They're, they read a bunch of reasons that we should have been prepared for this, but that doesn't matter if we tell you that the best form of debate is one where under the United States federal government. Also, just because they're a small school and they like have access to YouTube doesn't mean that they should be able to skirt the topic, even create more of debates that are turned into monologues. We're going for presumption on the, on the case debate. They, this debate has really nothing to do with that doesn't, that doesn't go along with what we talked about. No one really cares about the Blake Brown Robbins decision because it's just a tournament that happens after the, the tournament and where teams go and debate. It's just literally in the middle of winter break. But also, we can prove on the alternative decision that they talk about. They talk about like Query Lane producing them to actually do it. And we've seen no substantial change because of the Query Lane Brown. They just had the discussion and it went on YouTube. What has actually changed is they, they, they need to prove they need to prove to us what has substantially changed in the debate space because Query Lane did what they did. Just because they are reading an argument now because Query Lane did it does not mean any substantial change. There's been just one discussion that's happening and that's what this debate is going to be uh, probably turned into because they have no real uh, no real warrant how they create substantial change other than just creating a discussion that they talked about. It doesn't lead to publicity because we would just tell you that post is not beyond resolve doesn't mean that people will listen to it or that people are going to change their arguments. It's obviously in a, a world post this argument that people are still going to go towards sort of Venezuela talk or uh, Venezuela politics talk, which is probably a good thing. Theory shelf or key probably first the critique is the highest layer of debate. It comes before theory. 
First, our impacts are free fiat. The resolution is an imaginary mind experiment. They never interact with the fact that fiat is illusory. They drop that in our case. That means you extend it through. The government doesn't li listen to us. You can still discuss it, but nothing changes. As a result, their impacts are post-fiat. More importantly, even if they can prove that they harmed education in this one round, we argue that improving education across the entire debate space for all queer debaters is on net more beneficial. Second, critique comes before theory. The round was not fair for us before we entered it. We have been hated on and attacked. Even if they prove that we have made this one round unfair, increasing the fairness for all LGBT people always comes first over like this one debate round. Second, and more importantly, topicality is not a voting issue. First, language is indeterminate. Is there such, there's no such thing as the best definition. Ultimately, the words we use to describe things are not precise because language is imprecise. Besides, meaning is found not in words but in people. Second, topicality silences important voices. In many cases, policymakers do not hear important ideas because they come from the people of unpopular opinions. Policymakers avoid listening to these important ideas by using obscure rules and procedures. That links into our critique even harder. They avoid the discussion we're having in our narrative. They never interact with it. That links into our critique. Third and finally, judges decide what's topical. There's no way to know what's topical until the judges decide it's super subjective. Third and more importantly, they link into our critique because they just avoid the discussion. They ran a the theory shell. Running a the theory shell is the easiest way to avoid the discussion of the topic. They wanted to be debate a normal round with normal warrants, impacts, and wins. However, by running topicality, they never interact with our narrative. That turns their theory shell, that links into our critique, that's the post fiat, that's the pre-fiat impact. That links into the critique even harder. Four, we give you a counter-interpretation. Teams must only defend the discussion of the resolution or topic, not affirm or negate. More importantly, this the standard increasing marginalized voices. By allowing us to negate or affirm the general resolution, resolution that paves the way for people to discuss important issues that the NSDA does not care about. If we cannot talk about the resolution overall, we can't run this critique. The impact is education. Increasing marginalized voices in the debate space increases education by increasing diversity of thought. This education outweighs theirs, as their education is a heteronormative talking about education that excludes queer people. Even if they prove they increase education in this one round, we, use, we increase education for every round. That's on net more important. Go to our case. First, they say that their case solves one really big problem here. They can't like talking about the topic never actually impacts like real queer people. That's a pre fiat impact. That's more important. Then they drop fiat as illusory. That's the most important impact in the round. If they, they like can't even extend case at that. Then they say that nobody cares about the Blake Round Robin. One, one important thing, like, first, this is supposed to be, like, the best teams in the country. They should have been prepared for it. Second, more importantly, like, we're, like, we're going to get about, out about us running this critique. That's on net. More important. More importantly, you extend our alternative. They say it hasn't created a change yet. Recognize that we are the change because Alan O'Hunter ran the critique. Obviously, it's creating real change because we decided to run the critique because of it. On that, you extend your alternative, which is increasing publicity. If you vote for the critique that legitimizes other people's use of this critique in other debate rounds, that's on that more important. Go to their case. On their second contention, first turn to U.S. sanctions increase the likelihood of intervention. A is preparing the ground. Dobbins 19 finds sanctions play a useful role in preparing the ground for a military intervention by softening up the regime and demonstrating that intervening country has exhausted all options before it's forced. That turns their argument on their second contention. Sorry, go to their first contention. One problem here, the resource-driven or federal state can't become democratic. Long and stern 19 finds the resource courses affected many Latin American countries with prolific and populist elected leaders. That means even if you increase democracy right now, it's just going to go away in the future because they have like a lot of work.
told you in our case that in order to remove sanctions, you need government action. That means you need to talk about government action to talk about the software, right? And I will firstly say that you don't build on top of that. Secondly, say that the critique, even if you buy that we're not on top, will always come first. First, because this round was structurally disadvantaged us before we entered it. And second, and more importantly, we need increased education across the whole space. Okay. Cool. You say that, like, our alt has a fault, right? Have you ever heard of somebody running a critique like this before? So if somebody ran a computer security critique and debate about that. So I'm much further here than the critique of A is about that black education of A is a Like, but a queer theory critique, did anybody run that? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Probably not, because I haven't heard of it. So, like, we can't prove that our alt hasn't changed anything because somebody's running it. I have a question. You can prove to me that no one has read this kind of I don't, thing. like, I can't hurt, like, you're not, it hasn't gotten the public. You, you have not, in not many publicity probably proves our argument through because people have probably read this sort of argument before, but it hasn't gained traction in terms of the our argument <coughs> that we got the idea from the critique from another team that ran it before Bob and okay. so we don't public. So like we got the idea from another team and so we're like one team is having a really good argument now, like we go to the theory of the we're increasing publicity and increasing discussion. Okay. Yeah. So like you ever responded to Bob's position? Uh, I guess. So, you tell me that like that A is a constant force of theory, right? If theory yeah. is sort of the idea that this debate never should have happened in the first place, how come is A constant force of theory? So, so you're like, so your theory shell is saying that you've been like disadvantaged in this round because we're not topical. Like, we're saying that we were disadvantaged before we even came into the round because there's like a lot of queer phobia into it. I think that's where you miss a lot of other the theory or the topicality violation. It's not necessarily that this round has been unfair. It's also we you know, their violation was that we didn't defend the topic. Yeah, which means that in our interpretation that we should have defended the topic, not just because it was unfair for us, but also creates better knowledge production. We can actually yeah. spill up the things like the women yeah. wearing and things like that. And we need to know how to under, we need to know how to act with this in federal government, which is what our president said. All right.
Um, the off case condition is the case. Continuously, they say that they haven't interacted with their interpretation. We literally talked about their critique this entire debate, right? It's pretty unfair to come up here and say that. But on the line by line, they first say that the critique is best, and we have a pre fiat implication. We agree it's pre fiat, but we would say that the educational discussion that you're having is more harmful to us because we are not able to engage, we were not prepared, and we would contend that topic conversations are inherently better because it leads to prepared teams and actual flash of the resolution in which teams can engage with one another. Their second argument is that we're improving education because um, critique versus theories on debates are inherently better because even if this is unfair, it's about the space in general. However, they've literally conceded that it creates an unfair debate space in this debate round. That even if it's a better norm for the community, they have not provided any kind of contextualization or what that better norm looks like. They haven't told us any impact of what creating this critique is actually going to do in the community. And even if it becomes more public, that doesn't necessarily shift the mindsets of people in this room. There is no empirical validation for this argument. And more importantly, you should just prefer us on face. They have also ignored our definition of the United States federal government being based in Washington and that the colon creates a resolution, which means you need to prefer our resolutionality that definition. They have not provided any counterexamples, which means you prefer us on face there. Then they say the topicality isn't a voting issue. However, yes, it is. Because if there is a, if, if we don't read topicality, then the, the, the debate space becomes really uneducational. And we would say that topicality is a link into education and that we are the only ones that actually lead to an increase in a positive form of education in this debate round by addressing the topic. Because we say that the US federal government is an actor. That goes conceded, and that's the discussion that we should be having instead. Then they say that ultimately topicality is bad for the topic and that we don't interact with their critique. Two issues to this. One, they're not mutually exclusive. They literally read an argument at the top of their critique about LGBTQ plus in Latin America and also in an argument about, about like the debate space itself. But more importantly, our United States federal government definition is predictable. They have not provided a definition, which means you prefer us on face there and default to our competing interpretation. But more importantly, this is really important. We have literally said from the start that they, you can literally do both at the same time. There's no uniqueness as to why it's one or the other. But then maybe the counter interpretation that teams need to not defend, uh, teams need to not go after or neg, they literally are on the affirmative. This, you can read it on either side. They're not, they're going to need to meet their own counter interpretation and ultimately, they have conceded that sanctions are actually the result of a United States federal government action for our definitions at the top. Then they say that education increases in their world. However, I answer that above. And more importantly, this is a more educational space because it's about the topic which creates like discussion. They have literally cold conceded our McKinney evidence from 2015 that says in order to actually create really, really discussion, the quest for justice and the quest to solve back for all of their impacts, it actually is going to be needed and prepped, prepared opponents is a prerequisite to having this pre fiat discussion about like queer people in debate. We would contend that we would need to be prepared in order to have this discussion. They've literally conceded this, which means you assume it's true, and you would say that interaction with their movement actually is going to be better for creating movement motoring, because in our world, we have two prepared sides that present evidence that's inherently better. On the on, on back on case, they've conceded that you could do both, and you could have done both. You could have talked about the topic, and you could have also still talked about the critique. They literally did this in their okay, hold them to the standard. The Blake Rob Robin isn't that big of a deal. It doesn't really mean anything to anyone. You can also extend that the, the, the perm does both, the perm comes first, because we literally say, or sorry, the, the perm, you should vote um, on presumption, because we literally don't say that there's been any implication of people like having their mindset shifted.
Um, it's just going to go one off and then, okay. Everyone good? Awesome. Starting off the top of their one-off, remember the K comes before anything else they can see. That pre-op, pre-fiat is the most important impact in this round in both their summary and rebuttal. Essentially, they can see pre-op is important. So at that point, the U.S. government's actions don't actually matter because nothing is going to change whether you affirm or negate. None of their impacts talking about the U.S. government actually matters. Their definition isn't important at the point where nothing changes when you affirm or negate. You always vote for the K first. Second, and more importantly, the K is higher than any theory they can run. The only impact they can give you is that educated is limited for this one round, not even for a bid. However, we outweigh. We impact because we were disadvantaged before the round even takes place. Every round for us is disadvantaged because we are discriminated against for being queer. We outweigh. The K is more important than theory. Next, they link into our K by avoiding discussion in this round. They are linking into our K because they never actually interact with the narrative that we present you. The only thing they can tell you is that they increase the clash by staying on topic. However, they don't actually interact with their narratives. They can see that. For this account of interpretation, what we're saying is that you need to talk about the general resolution at hand, not exactly what the United States government is doing. At that point, we are linking into education by talking about the general resolution, which we link into with our VOA part of the top four case. But more importantly, we are linking into marginalized voices and allowing them to actually share their narratives in the debate space. Our impact is education and debate for marginalized voices. This outweighs because the only thing they can provide is a heteronormative narrative of what debate should look like. You always look towards increasing marginalized voices. But go to our case. First, they have a few responses. They say that we are able to do both in the both in both discuss the topic at hand and discuss the K. However, they never answer free fiat at the top of our case. That is the most important impact because we are actually free fiat. Our impacts actually manifest whether when you affirm. Second, they say that change is going to happen. Two problems with this. First, that's because no one's actually ran a queer race theory in public form before. Nothing that's actually been published. Second, look to Alan and Ahana when they um at the TOC when they conceded the round to have a discussion about feminist issues. It inspired us to run this K. It gave us inspiration to talk about marginalized voices. It's worked in the past. At that point, extend our K on the framing of uh, first. We're topical, look to BOA, concludes economic sanctions on Venezuela, demand this discussion. Second, this performance is the highest layer of the debate. A, our impacts are pre fiat. This resolution is an imaginary mind game. Our pre fiat impacts come first. They concede this. Second, critic before theory. The round was not fair before we entered it. We have been hated and attacked. Pre er, our narrative comes first. Third, this narrative is most important than staying on case for two reasons. A, Blake Round Robin is one of the most prestigious tournaments. All the teams here are super good. People look to this as what is going to happen. B, the NSDA will never give us a topic that allows us to discuss it. It is here or never. The harms, they never interact with this. Look to gladden our narrative that we provide you in case we have been continuously oppressed in the debate space. The all that we give you is publicity because we are both reporting and publishing this argument on Beyond Resolved. Word will get out. Increasing the publicity of this argument is critical. It's allowing the debate community to have an essential discussion on queer phobia that is inherent in debate right now. The difficult discussion is the internal link to any real change. We are the only team that provides you any actual change when you affirm. Great. Um, is everybody ready for crossfire? Yeah. Okay. Um, why, why do we not provide a discussion? Like, if Black we never interact with the narrative that we give about our experience in the debate. Yeah, like, like, the only interaction you provide with us is saying that this one round is increasing education. And no, that's not true. The opinion evidence is just our fundamental argument is that running a theory shell to get around the critique is the easiest way to avoid the yeah, two, 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 two responses to that. One, we have read case arguments that are literally responding to your case. The McKinnon evidence is not just like this one round is unfair. It sort of talks about the means to sort of leave things there. Our interpretation creates better forms of debate. Not that this one round is unfair. We create better forms of debate than it's so wait, wait, a better form of debate where only heteronormative people have a voice? Like, no, no, that is not at all our argument. Yeah. Our evidence is really explicit by saying that the ultimate quest for justice, which we agree with you, is very important and that your issues are very real, is better perpetuated.
saturated and better resolved when both teams are prepared to have a discussion about the topic at hand. We were not prepared to have that discussion, which is why we did. Having a discussion about the topic that supposedly solves these problems, why do they still exist in the debate? What do you mean? So you say we should have a discussion about the topic about these issues. All right, then why do the problems still exist? Our argument, well, we would say it's probably due to like a broader inequality that we can't solve right now, but we would say our argument probably solves it better. Debates about the topic in the United States federal government, so we could have a debate about what's the best United States federal government action to end. So, so how is this sort of at home end so we are going? So how is the United States federal government action specifically going to impact to increasing marginalized voice in the debate? Because I don't understand how you're not so we create this better debate about sort of this. Like, even if it's not about the debate space, we need to a broader sort of movement lawyer. But like, you never interact with our argument saying that in the current like space of debate, by sticking with the status quo that you're arguing for, marginalized voices are actually able to speak their own truth. But like, at the point where you read us this definition about like United States action, how does that actually interact? So the argument is they can speak their own truth using United States federal government action, which creates better debate because then we can debate what's the best. Yes. From I also think it's important that, 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 that like we could have had a discussion about the critique and about the topic, and that's something that's kind of been in every single speech. And I'm still confused as to why. Like, like you, it's read in your own critique. You have a link to the topic. Why like, can't we do both? Having like an impact to talk about the United States federal government supposedly we change on something like isn't a free fiat impact. Like you can see that framing at the top of our page. Yeah. So that means even if you win that, like the United States federal government ending sanctions on men for keeping them would decrease anti queer violence. We still win because we need to be like real anti -fear. In the debate space, that is sort of a way that is pretty fiat. Having discussions Wait. about the best way that the United States federal government can come about action is a way that sort of we can well, combat and that. That's a wider question for the resolution also. Like, hey, you've never like mentioned that in any of your speeches. B, if we've been having this discussion about like specific resolutions for like as long as public form has been a thing, why are we still saying the oppression of queer voices is a stable solve? We would tell you specifically how we have analyzed these. Thank you. 
Every one of those people you will leave me after this. They can't be used. Go to their theory shell. That's the only thing they have said on our critique in the debate. Three key problems. First, we argue that the crit critical performance app always comes before the theory shell because we were disadvantaged before we came into the round. The only response they give to this was in first final focus. That means you extend it through. They never contest that our chaos <coughs> always, is always evaluated before the theory shell because not only were we disadvantaged before we came into the round, that means the theory violation that happened like in the round, even if they prove it was abusive, doesn't matter. Second and more importantly, their theory shell links into our critique because they want to uphold the status quo of debate, which is what's happening right now. There's no change happening right now. That means they avoided the discussion we wanted to have. They never interact with the line by line of our narrative. That means their theory shell links into our critique. Third and more importantly, the only voices they uphold in the theory shell is like the heteronormative voices that happens in the like debate space right now. That links into our critique. Then on our case, the only thing they extend is that, like, vote on presumption, there's no change happening right now. First, nobody's ran a queer theory shell debate, so obviously there can't be change. Second, like, even, like, on a different critique that was ran at the Tournament of Champions, we are the change that happened as a result of it. We saw that a critique was being ran, and we decided to run a critique as a result of it. That's the empirical example. At that point, extend our critique. First, like, even then, like, we believe we are topical, we'll look to be a way which includes U.S. economic sanctions, like, for queer rights. Second, this performance is the highest layer of the round. Remember, critique becomes core theory. The round was not fair before we end. We ended it. We even hated an attack, even if they proved this one round was unfair. Increased fairness for all LGBT people always comes short. First, we need to read this critique and not stay on case for like two reasons. A, the late round robin is the most prestigious tournament in the country. Like this is like where we need to do it right now. We don't have another opportunity. B, NSDA will never give us a top four we can discuss. Be harmed. Look to black. LGBT people, LGBT people experience this violence in the debate space. They miss days of school. They are attacked. They are hated upon. When you vote for the R alt on increasing publicity, that's what solves. Because like when one word gets out that we're reading this argument, other people are going to read it too, just like we did. That's the internal link to change in the community. That's the only way to solve the problem. Thank you. 